I'm actually going to go on a little Jefferson Lab tour today. Welcome to my crib. He is etching um, uh, the edges of those half cells that have been pressed out um, before they go to the electron beam welder. So he's doing some surface prep on those, those edges so he can have a nice clean weld. I like how there's just cavities yeah. laying around. Yeah, uh, this one's been uh, They're a dime around dozen. for a long time. We need to move it somewhere more. Uh, <laughs> Away. Yeah. Do they get repurposed at all, or is it? Yes, we're always using old cavities. Um, there's certain cell shapes, and uh, scientists will come and re-etch the inside to re cool. um, reinvigorate the surface, whatever you want to call it. Right. And, and do something to it. Maybe it's a different country. Maybe it's uh, something else that they want to try out. So yeah, we, we just don't make them once and just throw them away. We'll, we'll continue to reuse them. Some of them turns out to be real duds. So let's let's be honest. Alright, so this is a hamster cage. This is a vacuum vessel. No. Um, this is what that string will get shoved into for the LCLS2. Um, the cable around it is they'll hook up a, a power supply and they need the this is the carbon steel. Uh, with uh, stainless steel flanges put onto it. They did carbon steel because it's cheaper, uh, but that has problems. It has a magnetic field around it which affects the cavity, so they have to demag it, degauss it. Now we're about to go see the arc reactor. This is the gate to keep all the liberal, liberal arts majors out. It's armed with snipers and yeah, Basic science questions. This is the world's largest AC unit, probably. <laughs> so this is this is the uh, normal or, or regular entrance to the tunnel. It's called the man trap, and it's used as part of our personal protective system. Once you get inside, the outer door will be closed and locked, and then uh, you would take a key, right? The way this is set up is the control room releases this key, it goes here, and then each person that goes in would have their own key, right? Ten keys, ten people can go in. If more than ten people can go, need to go in, then we have to open everything up. In the ejector, we create four beams, right? So each beam is separated in time. We call this a continuous beam accelerator, but we're actually kind of not being truthful about that. Really our beams are done uh, a very high frequency. 1497 is what is the frequency our RF uh, cavities respond to, and each beam is created on a subharmonic of that, either 499 or 250. Why 499? 499, when we only had three beams, each beam would be at 499, they would be separated in time, right? So if you looked into the beam line, beam line and you could see the beam, which you can't, they would be separated, packets would be separated by a certain amount of time. Why is this important? Well, because if you were to go far enough down this linear, you would see separators that would allow you to separate the beam into each of the halls, so that A beam would go would go into A hall, B beam would go into B hall, and C beam would go, go into C hall. And this all worked very well. We operated it for years and years as a four to six GB machine, and that was all great. Well, then we decided we'd get ambitious. We wanted to go to 12 GV, and we wanted to build a new hall. Well, in order to do that, our 
ABC, ABC, ABC scheme didn't work anymore, right? Because you can't divide 1497 by, by 4 and get an even number that's a good subharmonic, right? One of the points of doing certain frequencies is if you can, you want to do, do frequencies that industry already does. So as you can see here, we use dipole magnets, right? Remember I said we go down to a single beam line. And we do this by clever design of these magnets so that that magnet knocks down one beam, that other magnet knocks down, you know, another beam, right? And all until the beams all meet here, and they end up being in one continuous orbit, right, but separated by time. In the cryo module, there are RF cavities. The cavity is made of niobium. It's attached in series with, to the beam line at this end and out the beam line there. Those are the cavities. The cavity accelerates. The cavity accelerates it with RF energy that comes through this waveguide from a Klystron that's in the service building in an equipment rack up there. And if we were to go all the way down, this, the, the LINAC here, what you would see is about is 20 of these zones, right? And then you would see five of the new zones. Filter. Yeah. I put one in. What we want to do, um, blue X means it's a gluon excitation experiment. So what we are interested in is to to look for for states of QCD. There are many many other things that you can do to the detector. Like this. Um, we're using not directly the, the 12 GV electron beam from the from the CBF accelerator, but we we have a secondary photon beam. These um, photons they travel this 200 feet um, to our hall, and in principle they hit a target, liquid hydrogen target that we're gonna see later, and then we have a large detector that in, that can cover almost. Uh, the entire um, angular acceptance, so almost the, the almost four pi. If you decide to cut through here, there, there is a hole in the floor, so just oh, good. be careful if you Thanks. walk through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, what we see here is responsible for the liquid hydrogen target, um, which we can actually the, the actual target is pulled out and. You can see it under the, this acrylic glass, um, which is just 30 centimeters long. It's not very, it's not very big, and it's filled with liquid nitrogen. But usually, also this is movable, so usually this is pushed forward into the hole that you can see in the center of the of the mag magnet there. And then all the cables around the the center there, they belong to the central drift chamber to the straw tube tracker and so it's read out with all these chambers and around the central drift chamber is the barrel colorimeter which um, you can hardly see because there are so many cables coming out and around that in red of course is the the magnet It's like a needle in a haystack. You, you, you install it and then you leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Optimus Prime's intestines. And you can yeah. see there's there's a lot of electronics in a very confined space there. So cooling is actually really important. There's there's a water cooling system um, for for parts um, which you can see in the, the these black tubes. And there's air cooling for the for the electronics outside um, because all this. All these electronics, they, they make a lot of power, a lot of heat in the confined space. Uh.